By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my Goblins deck against Anna. And Anna has been on the show before with different decks, so uh, maybe you recognize his style of play. And one of the most exciting decks that he played with on this channel is a reanimator deck. It was really a joy to play against and also a joy to look at the beautiful cards. If you haven't seen that game, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now and it will take you to the vid. Um, for now, Anna is playing with an artifact deck. It's very interesting. It's a Urzatron deck. And before we start the actual match, let's take a quick look at his deck. The deck of Anna is named Big Boys and it's got Don't Cry in brackets. And when I look at the deck, I kind of understand the name because look at those huge creatures. I see three Colossus of Sardia, the 9-9 Tramplers from Antiquities. I see four Triskelions. I see uh, three Tetravis. Tetra yeah, and they make Tetravite. That's it. You see the tetra little Tetravite uh, tokens there at the bottom. And uh, what a beautiful list of creatures. And also there are the four Suchis, the four fours for four. And everything is black bordered as well. It's just a beautiful playlist to look at. Now the cards on the right side, and that's the Black Vices and the Relic Barriers and Winter Orbs. Um, that part is the sideboard. So I'm just going to look at the main deck for now. And what I notice obviously are the Urzalans. So he's playing with... Um, with the Urza lands and that means that when you have a tower, a power plant and a mine on the board they generate more mana so all of a sudden the mine and the power plant generate two mana and the uh, uh, tower generates three so that means that if you have all three different Urza lands just tapping those three lands will give you seven mana also you see three candelabras of Tanis now candelabra of Tanis is a very powerful card but it's extremely powerful when you combine it with Urza because a Candelabra of Tanis says tap X lands to untap or tap X mana to untap X lands. So that means that when you can tap your, your you've, when you've got Tron, you can tap your land for two mana and simply spend one mana to untap your land. So in other words, when you have Tron and you have Candelabra of Tanis, you have a huge amount of manas available. I mean, that's, that's the story, you know, that's the story. And Candelabra of Tanis also works very well with Library of Alexandria, for instance, because when you have seven cards in hand, you can activate Library of Alexandria to draw an extra card. And while that's still on the stack, you can untap it with Candelabra of Tanis and activate the Library of Alexandria again. So you can actually get uh, two cards instead of one card. So Library of Alexandria is already insanely strong, but compared uh, when you use it with Candelabra of Tanis, it's just, it's, extremely insane and also we see three maze of ifs now again a maze of if and a candelabra of tanis they make a great uh, great partnership together because with the candelabra of tanis you can use the maze of if multiple times same can be said for the mistress factory so we see a full play set there same story mistress factory can pump itself but when you can untap it an extra time, it can pump itself again. So you actually have a 4-4 blocker. But also in attack, it's quite interesting. Attacking, untapping it to pump itself. And what about if you have multiple uh, Mishra's factories on the board? So there, there is a lot of combos and, and synergy going off as soon as you have the Candelabra of Tanis on the battlefield. So I'm really looking forward to kind of see that happening in this game another really nice combo here that i see when i'm just looking at this list is the tonis's coffin now tonis's coffin is he's, he's playing with two they're just under the little book tonis's coffin allows you to put a creature in the coffin you need to pay three and tap and you can just put any creature in the coffin and you can just do this at instant speed and um the interesting thing is when it comes out of the coffin the creature is tapped so that's the first thing but the counters stay on the creature. So if you put a Triskelion with three counters in the coffin, the counters are not lost, they stay on the on the uh, Triskelion. What that means is when you let the Triskelion out again, 
Um, so when you untap it during your uh, untap phase and you let the interscaling out, the counters double. So all of a sudden you don't have three counters during interscaling, you have six counters. And obviously this also works with the Tetravas. So this is a card you can use defensively by uh, putting a creature from your opponent in the coffin, but you can also use it offensively by putting your own creatures with counters in the coffin and they come out of the coffin with multiple counters. Now another really interesting card, and I see he's playing with a one-off, is uh, the Sword of the Ages. So it's a Legends Rare, and it's there in the right top corner, just right next to the sideboard. And it's it's six mana to cast, so it's huge, but what you can do with it, you can sacrifice it, and then you can sacrifice an amount of creatures, and it deals damage to your opponent equal to the power of those uh, creatures. So he has very, you know, he's playing with the big boys, so what if he can just sack a Colossus of Sardia, or even two? That's 18 direct damage i mean there's not much you can do against it especially with my goblin deck i'm very vulnerable so i'm really looking forward to kind of um see all these mechanics in action and it's obvious when i'm looking at this list that he wants to get a lot of mana out quick and then play really big creatures also looking at for instance the mana vault the black lotus um the moxen here in the deck i believe he plays he's playing with yeah, he's playing with all five Moxen, so he has a lot of mana ramp going on. And also, um, I notice the four Howling Mines. So because he has a lot of mana, he's probably able to uh, play out all his cards very quickly. So what he wants to do is, once he's done that, he he needs the Howling Mine to kind of refuel his hand. And he can use the little books to early game if he doesn't have Tron yet to kind of get the right pieces of the puzzle. I think that's why he's chosen for the, the little book instead of the big book in this case. Um, so that's basically the deck. I hope I've given you some insight into how it's supposed to work. Now, obviously I'm not its designer, so I could have missed a few things, but let's go over to the games and, and see what's gonna happen. Game number one is about to begin and it's the big boys deck on the left side. And I'm on the right playing with Goblin Bowl and let's see who's going to start here. Um, it's going to be interesting to uh, to take on this uh, this crazy artifact deck. And I guess I'm on the play here. And it looks like we're both keeping our hands. And there's a City of Brass and a Mox Ruby. Taking a damage here from the city. And there you go, great start for me here with two goblins at turn one. That's what you want to do with the goblin deck. Get goblins and smash your opponent. So that's um, goblins of the flark on the right from the dark and an uh, unlimited goblin balloon brigade there on the left. And let's see what Ana can do here. Playing in power plant, a mox jet and a mox pearl. And into a Howling Mine. I don't really mind that right now because it just gets me two cards and that's great because I just emptied most of my hand on that turn one. So going in here for two damage, playing a Mountain and playing a Copper Tablet. The Artifact for two, that deals a damage to you during your upkeep. So you can see that now. So Anna is on 17 at the moment, drawing two cards as well. Ooh, and this is a Workshop and that means that he has six mana and that's a key amount for his deck having the Triskelion playset and the Tetravus. And this is a big problem because those three plus one plus one counters on Tetravus, uh, I mean on Triskelion also represents one damage each. So that means that he can just kill my goblins here. Let's see what I'm going to do. Paying a mountain here to give my goblin flying and it gets shot out of the air with one of the counters from a Triskelion. Taking, no, not taking a damage there, uh, playing another Copper Tablet. So that means two damage here. And that's basically what I want to do, just making sure that I can deal damage every turn. As soon as I'm not dealing damage anymore, it's, uh, it's a problem. Now let's see what's gonna happen. He still has so much mana, and that in combination with that Howling Mine, makes me kind of scary because he's going to draw into big creatures here and there you have one of those other big heavy hitters the 4-4 flyer the tetravis and during his upkeep he can put the three counters that's on the creature he can put it off the creature and then he has three tetravite or one tetravite he can choose however he wants to do it um, and they are 1-1 flying creatures 
First the attack with the 3-3 three, three Triskelion. That means 3 damage for me going to 15 and now taking 2 damage from my own Copper Tablets. Going to 13 here. Let's see what I can do. Tapping 3. Playing a Goblin King. So that means that my Goblin of the Flark is now a 2-2. Two, two. Already has Mountain Walk. And I could really use a Bat Moon right now. Let's see what else. Oh, I was hoping for a Disenchant. But I don't play the main board, so I guess I was I was hoping for nothing. I play an Atok here, and I'm playing two Atok in this deck. And let's see what my opponent is going to do. So deciding to take the counters off the Tetravis, and there you can see the three Tetravite tokens. They have summoning sickness, so that means they cannot attack yet. Pretty cool tokens. And let's see what Anna can do here. He has all that mana. It's just scary. Basically what I'm hoping for now is just, I don't know, just being able to at least put in one or two more swings and then just finish it with direct damage, chain lightning, lightning bolt. Try to stay alive in the process, but it's gonna be really, really tough. Another six. Oh, and I think this is it. I think the game is almost decided now because Triskelion is so strong against this deck because I'm playing with these little creatures and that means that Triskelion is basically a 2 for 1, sometimes even a 3 for 1. And look at what he's, he does now. So he kills my Goblin King and that means that my Goblin of the Flark is a 1-1. One, one. He kills my Goblin of the Flark and I only have an Atok left and he hits me through the air with the 1-1 one, one Tetravis. So this is hard, two damage now, I'm going to nine. Drawing two cards still and attacking. Hopefully he'll let this pass and I can sack all my artifacts and then finish it with direct damage. That's kind of my plan here. But I doubt if Anna is going to do that. And yeah, he just is going to jump lock on his one one Triskelion here. That's not great for me. And I'm playing a Chain Lightning here on Anna. And the reason I do this is that with the Copper Tablet combined, he's going to be on 8th. And that's kind of in bolt range, kind of, not really. So I'm kind of hoping to, to just find the direct damage because that's basically the plan that I'm, I'm working with right now because he's untapping. He has 4 power in the air now that he can use to attack so that's four more damage he has two counters still in the Triskelion so that also represents two damage so that alone is already six damage and I'm on nine playing another Triskelion at wow that's his third Triskelion in this game that's crazy attacking here and what is he going to do I'm able to play a Lightning Bolt on the Tetravis. I have to or else I'm dead. Because I'm now going to 6 and if not I would have gone to 5 and he could have killed me with the plus 1 plus 1 counters off the Triskelions. By taking those off he can deal direct damage to me. And what I have to do now as well, and that's what we're discussing, I have actually have to sacrifice my own Copper Tablets in my end step. I cannot do that um, during my turn or I can do that during my turn but then I have to take the damage from the Copper Tablets. So I have to do it on my end step, unfortunately. At least I get no damage, so that means I'm still alive. But I need a miracle. Attacking here with both creatures. And he's sending back my Atok with his Mace of If, killing um, my Goblin of the Flark. And I guess the only way of me to kind of survive here would have been a balance. Anyway, he's attacking me now and then finishing it with the Triskelion. So that's a great victory here for Honor. Congratulations. There was just too much Triskelion fire, firepower on the board for me to survive this. Uh, but we're going to our sideboard. So hopefully I can uh, figure something out. Um, I'm definitely going to board in some artifact hate. And we'll see you back at game number two. Game number two is about to begin. And I guess I'm on the play. So we've done some sideboarding. And um, 
let's see what I can do here, really. Like I said, I've boarded in some uh, some artifact hate, obviously, playing against an old artifact deck. I actually have a Shatterstorm in my sideboard. Only one, though, but I've, uh, I've put that in. And here's my opening here with a Mountain into a Black Vice. So this is great, at least dealing three damage. And look at that opening. Oh my goodness. So Anna has a Black Lotus, a Mox Pearl, Mox Emerald, and Mox Jet, and a Tower. So many mana. But I guess if he doesn't have a follow up, it's not that bad because almost his entire hand is empty now. So really curious. And I'm playing two Balloon Brigades for some damage. And ooh, there is. A maze of if with the candelabra of Tana, so that means he can use it twice and he can stop my creatures taking two damage from the city of brass and this is great look at that so i'm able to cast a blood moon and that means that the maze of if is turned into a basic mountain so he can no longer use it so at least i'm able to deal two damage now but he still has a ton of mana and i'm really curious let's see what he can do with it Second the Lotus, nine mana, look at that, a Colossus of Sardia, how cool is that? And this is a nine, nine trample creature. So, wow. Playing a Goblin King here and giving plus one, plus one. And attacking because they have mountain walk, so they can go through the mountains of Anna because he now has basic mountains because of that, um, because of that Blood Moon. And I'm now taking a hit of 9, so I'm taking 9 damage, but at least, and this is my advantage, and hopefully that's going to keep me alive, um, he needs 9 mana to untap the Colossus of Sardia, and as you can see, he only has 7 mana right now, so I can now swing in for 6, and he's already on 11, so that would mean he, if everything goes well, he goes to 5 life, and then hopefully he cannot find, uh, for instance, a... Triskelion, because that would be pretty disastrous. And also a copper tablet here, so that's great news. So he's going to four, he's unable to untap. And now he's actually drawing the extra mana, but it's just not enough. So I'm winning this one. Wow, that went really, really, really fast. Um, so I've won this second game. Let's quickly go to game number three and see, see who is going to win this matchup. Game number three is about to begin, and so it's 1-1, one, one, and that second game went by very fast. After that insane opening by Anna, and there wasn't really a follow-up, and, you know, I could just... My Goblin deck can deal a lot of damage very quickly. That's basically the idea, and that's kind of what you saw in that um, second game. But that casting of Colossus of Sardia was extremely cool. And uh, he, he even managed to, to hit me for 9 damage with that Colossus of Sardia. Well, let's see what's going to happen. Uh, Anna is going to be on the play after losing that second game. So it's 1-1. Uh, it's and I think, I think if Anna can find the Triskelions like he did in game 1, um, it's going to be a big problem for me. So for my sake, let's hope that he doesn't. And let's see how it starts here. So a power plant into a candelabra. And the candelabra looks innocent now, but it can cause some serious problems later in the game. And I'm playing a Goblin Balloon Brigade here, turn one. And a Howling Mine, and he almost has Tron, so he only needs an Urza's Mine to get Tron. And then all of a sudden he'll have a lot of mana. So let's see what I can do here. Playing a Plateau. First attacking for one. And then I'm playing a Disenchant over the Howling Mine. And this, of course, is um, another disadvantage of the Howling Mine. And you see players do this often. Um, they first draw an extra card and then they Disenchant or Shatter or Crumble or you name it. And there's a Mox Pearl. And another Disenchant. Wow, so Anna is very unlucky. So he just basically gave me two cards and he had to tap out every turn. Because look, he missed his drop, his mana drop that one turn. So is he having mana problems? Passing turn, he probably kept his hand, also thinking I have my Howling Mines and I'll draw into something. But with my Disenchants, um, it's, it didn't work out for Anna here. And I'm playing a Goblin King. So that means that all of a sudden my Goblins can deal four damage and then a Chain Lightning, so that's seven damage in one goes. So he's on 11 and now there's this 
Library of Alexandria, but he doesn't have enough cards yet in his hand, and it seems a little bit too slow against my aggressive deck here. I've got six damage on the board. He's on 11, so that means he's going to five. And look at that, playing a Bull Lightning, and that's game. That's game, even playing a Lightning Bolt, wow. Showing me his hand, he did have the Triskelion, which is a key card, I think, against me, but he couldn't get to Tron, he couldn't reach it. So, bad luck here, and for me, very lucky with the Ditching Chance, but also just a great way to finish it. This is what I want to do, playing that Bull Lightning, being very aggressive. So I'm very happy, actually, with this match, when I look at how my deck performed. Um, winning here, 1-2. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd enjoyed this game and would like to see more old school magic, um, you can take a look on the, um, on the channel, of course, Timmy the Sorcerer, right here on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's very much appreciated. I'm trying to reach a 1,000 uh, members. I believe we're somewhere around the 600 number right now. If you want to see more old school magic games, you can just click on one of the links that or one of the videos that are appearing right now on the screen. Um, I have more than 70 videos now of matches. Please leave a comment and a reply. Let me know what you think. For now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time.